Hi. In this session, we begin with percentages. This video is going to be about absolute basic stuff of percentages. I'm sure the symbol of percentage as seen on your screens would be known to most of you. This symbol percentage stands for nothing but divided by 100. So instead of writing the longest expression divided by 100, we just replace it with the symbol percentage, right? So if we have P percent, it's written P percent, we typically mean the number P divided by 100, right? So let's work at the few percentage values. Uh, eventually, they all are numbers itself. They are just represented differently. For example, the number 20%. It is same as 20 by 100 and in decimal form, this is as good as 0.2. So 20% is the number 0.2, as simple as that, right? We would rarely be using decimal values. The fractional values are going to be far more important. So the 20 by 100 when reduced to fraction is nothing but 1 by 5. So I can always say 20% is 1 by 5, right? Percentages can also be more than 100. So our next value is 125%, which in a, eliminating the symbol of percentage will be as simple as 125 divided by 100. In the decimal form, 1.25. The fractional form is more useful. So let's reduce the 125 by 100. 25 will cancel out the numerator denominator. I'll be getting 5 by 4. So keep catching up these fractions and percentages as we go. 125% is nothing but 5 by 4, right? Uh, it could be as simple as 4%. So 4% is the number 4 by 100. In decimals, 0 0.04. In fractions, 4 by 100, 4 cancels out and we'll be getting 1 by 25. So 4% is nothing but 1 by 25. And can I percentage be, can it be in decimals? Yes, 0.4%. Oh, so that's 4%, that's 0.4%. 0.4% is nothing but 1 tenth, right? So obviously the answer is going to be 0 0.004 or in fractions is going to be 1 by 250, right? So these are just numbers, right? They're just represented a little differently. So what's the relation between 4 and 0 0.4? 0 0.4 is 1 tenth of 4. So the 1 by 25 has become 1 by 250 out of area, right? We could have a recurring number also 16.6666% as a recurring and we are going to see this very, very often 16.6666%. So it's going to be just 16.6666 recurring divided by 100 in decimal form. It's a very tough even to speak it out 0.16666. You can obviously approximate it to 0.167 but then there's some approximation. If I want to calculate it exactly and understand it's a much more easier number in the exact way, right? Uh, I need to represent 16.66 as mixed fraction, 16 two thirds, which is 16 threes are 48 and 50 by 3. Now doing the fractional of 50 by 3 divided by 100, it turns out to be a very simple fraction called 1 by 6. So 16.66% in fraction is nothing but 1 by 6. So we have seen any percentage value can be converted to a decimal value or a fractional value all that you need to do is replace the percentage sign by divided by 100 and if this is true the reverse also should be true that is any decimal or a fractional value can be converted to a percentage value how can we do that 0.25 all i need to do is represent this number as a fraction with the denominator being 100 and then this divide by 100 can be represented by the symbol percentage, right? So 0.25 is what number divide by 100? Or oh, we can always do 0.25 into 100. Since I multiplied by 100, I can divide it by 100, right? Keeping the denominator intact, it becomes 25 by 100, which can be represented as 25%. So as a calculation, essentially, that we have done here, 0.25 into 100, 25, and that is appended with a sign percentage, right? Now, the example, how about the number 2 itself? So, I need to represent it with the 100 as a base. Currently, the denominator is 2 by 1. So, I multiplied by 100, which becomes 200 by 100, which can be represented as 200%. So, the number 2 is nothing but 200%. The number 1 is 100%.
right? Uh, another value, this time we'll deal with a fraction 2 by 5. So 2 by 5 into 100, the whole thing divided by 100, calculating just the numerator part, 5, 20, 22 is a 40, so it's 40 by 100 and we can write it as 40%. So another fraction which is going to be used quite often, 2 by 5 is 40%. And lastly, 1 by 8. 1 by 8 into 100, the whole divide by 100, keeping the denominator intact, calculating the numerator and dividing it completely, 100 uh, by 8. 8 twelves are 96, so 4 left over, 4 by 8 is 0.5. So that's going to be 12.5 by 100, which is nothing but in representation form 12.5%. So, to convert any decimal or fractional value to a percentage, all that we need to do is multiply that by 100. Whatever value you get, append a percentage sign after that. Hope you have got this, right? So, let's just practice a quickly a couple of them. So, convert uh, the following percentage to fraction, let's say 37.5. These values are so chosen because these are what we are going to use repetitively over and over again. So, 37.5% is nothing but 37.5 by 100 in its simplest sense. A textbookish way without giving any foresight is going to be 375 by 1000 or you can see 25 common. So, you can cancel by 25, 25 will cancel 1000 by a 40 will cancel 375 by a 15. If you are even smarter, 125 could have been common, 125 threes are 375, 125 eights are 1000. So, the fraction is going to eventually be 3 by 8, right? Or else 37.5 by 100, you could have easily, to if the decimal is troubling you, you could have easily doubled up double it up right so that's going to be 75 by 200 25 threes are 75 25 eights are 200 so that's again 3 by 8 whichever way you go about right it depends upon how fast you are in your multiplication tables and so on right one more number 6.6666 a recurring number uh, in a percentage uh, what fraction is it is going to be 6.6666 by 100 please don't approximate you're going to make matters worse for yourself right you write it in the correct mixed fraction way that is 6 2 thirds which is 6 3 is 18 and to 20 by 3 so the 3 will go to the denominator it will be 20 by 300 which is nothing but 1 by 50 so the fractional form of 6.66 percent is 1 by 50. so what we are doing here is we are just working with converting a percentage to a fraction and a vice versa because these are things that will be assumed from the next session that you can do it very fast right so let's do the reverse process, convert the following fraction to a percentage, the fraction is 1 by 9, all I have to do is into 100 and 100 uh, cannot be completely divided by 9, so I am doing the actual division process, 9 elevens are 99, so that's going to be 11 point something, I am left with 1, decimal point will become 10, 9 ones are 9, again 1 left, put a 0, 9 ones are 9. So, I'll be getting 11.11 and append a sign percent, 11.11111 percent, right? How about 1 by 16? To convert it to percentage, just multiply it by 100, 1 by 16 into 100, let's uh, cancel out out over here. So, 4 can cancel, 4 25s are 100, 4 4s are 25 by 4 is nothing but 6.25 append it with a percentage, 6.25 percentage. In our next session, video session, we are going to see a better way to learn all these. However, before we wind this session up, let's understand a very basic usage of percentage. Most of the people who are very weak in maths uh, uh, do, do not get the concept of using. Why do we use a percentage? Well, right. Remember, percentage is always, there is no exception to it. It is always of some value, of a base. The value will call it as a base. For example, we have been using percentages all throughout. Let's say I scored in a test, I scored 80% marks. Does that mean my marks are 80 by 100, 0.8? My marks is 0.8. The examiner has given me 0.8 marks. Not really. We mean 80% of, this is what I mean, of multiplication of the maximum marks, whatever the paper was worth. So I've got 0.8 times the maximum marks. Another example, milk is 60% of a solution. Does that mean milk is 0.6 liters? Not really. It is 60% of a base. 0.6 times something. Of what? It's written of the solution. So 0.6 times the 
total solutions. Similarly, let's say in a class, girls are 40%. Does that mean the number of girls are 0.4? Obviously, it can't be possible. Girls can't be in fraction, right? 0.4 times that I for 40% off. So the moment you see a percentage, attach an anchor to it. It is 0.4 times an anchor, right? What of the class? So it's going to be the class trend. Hope these examples were very simple because there were a context to it. The moment we come to mathematical one, toughness begins, right? For example, a number increases by 20%. I've seen so many people write the increase as 20%, 20 by 100, 0 0.2. So the new value is n plus 0 0.2. Remember the 20 is not 0 0.2, it is 20%. Percent. percent has some base attached to it. So never leave 0 0.2 hanging, right? 20% of what? 20% of, since nothing is given, I only have one number to start with. It has to be 20% of that number, right? So the increase is 0 0.2 times the number n itself. So the new value will be the original n plus 0.2 n. Remember, it has that, right? If this sounded tough, let's use a, again a contextual uh, example. My weight decreases by 10%. So I work out a lot and my weight reduced by 10%. What does that mean? Has my weight gone down by 0.1 kg 0.1 grams not really right 10 percent percent off 10 0.1 times what whatever my weight was so if my weight was w it's going to be w minus 0.1 times w hope you understand that 10 percent is off a base right that has to be a base let's take a value from uh, uh, example from data interpretation something you read in your newspapers or so on sales of infosys grew by 25 percent what does it mean? 25% as a numeric value is 0.25. Does it mean sales of Infosys grew by 0.25 crore, 0.25 million? Is that what they are trying to say? Not really. Then they would have written 0.25 crore. They are writing 25%. Percent is of some value. It is compared to something, right? 25%. And what is it compared? We are talking sales growing. So it will be compared to the previous sales, over the previous year sale. So remember, the increase in sale is not 0.25. It is 0.25 times a base value. And what is that base value? The previous year's sales, right? So let's see some more situations uh, where it is apparent uh, what the base of the percentage is. And we come across these in our everyday life also. For example, bank offers a interest rate of 15% or I pay a interest rate of 15% on a loan taken. So this is 15%. It is 15% of what? Of the money that I deposit in bank, of the money that I took a loan, right? So it's 0.15 times of that value, right? Or else in a business, the profit percentage is 75%. Doesn't mean the amount, whoever does that business is going to earn only 0.75 rupees. It is 75% percentage of what? Of the cost price. It is understood of the investment. Whatever money that I put in, it is going to be 75% of that. Right? Uh, one more example, DMART is offering a 10% discount. I don't really expect a 0.1 rupee discount. Right? It is 10% off of a base. Right? 10% of what? Of the MRP. Whatever is listed, 10% I'll be getting off of it. Right? In situations when the uh, base is not very obvious, it will be given in the question. For example, consider the statements. Amit's salary is 80%. Now, what, what does it mean? 80% as in 0.8? Obviously, we know it doesn't mean Amit is earning 0.8, whatever the uh, units may be. 80% is of some value. Of what value is not very evident here. Amit is just a general character here out of it, right? So the sentence, complete sentence would have been Amit's salary is 80% of Bharat's. The word off is a big clue here. So all beginners latch on to this word off. 80% off. Of what? Of Bharat. So 0.8 times Bharat. Right? Consider the reverse. Bharat's salary, the sentence being Bharat's salary is 125% of Amit. Here again, the comparison is between salaries of Bharat and Amit. But here Bharat's salary is compared with what base? With the base of Amit salary, 125% of whom? Of Amit, right? So 1.25 times Amit salary. That is the base out of here, right? One last example, let's say Santro is 20% more costlier. So obviously we are comparing it with, right? 20%, it's a percent more costlier. So where is the base of comparison? The whole sentence should be Santro is 20% more costlier than Alto. So the word here to watch out for is than. The offer has changed to than because there's a more or less relation, right? 
so 20 percent more than alto the base is alto so 0.2 times alto this is going to be by the amount by which sandpaper is more costly uh, i can still compare the same but change the base as in alto is 25 percent cheaper than sandro now the word associated than is sandro so sandro is my base so 25% 0.25 will be off Santro and this is the amount by which Alto will be cheaper than Santro. Hope you have got this. Uh, so very basic stuff out of a year. In the next session, we are going to look at converting percentages to fractions in a far, uh, let's say, logical manner.